Hi and welcome to another DIY video. You know, I'm a firm believer in this thing of idea of building something rather than buying it. Building it, you will take much more greater pride in it. You'll have a greater understanding on how the device works, obviously. And I think at the end of the day, you'll take a lot more care of it. Today's project, I've seen several variations on the team. And some guys use washing machine motors, some guys use angle grinders, some use drills. I've seen all sorts of variations. Now, I'm not going to go through the actual building of what I'm about to show you. But I will go through the process and I'll uh, discuss the pros and cons, I suppose, and things to watch out for. And just to share my version or my design and how I came to build it and put it together. And maybe in the process it will incentivize you to do the same and also give you tips and hints. Uh, and things to watch out for so that you don't run into any difficulties or problems yourself if you do decide to take on the project. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about and I go through it step by step. So this is what I'm talking about here and it's basically a bench sander or sanding disc and it, um, it works very well for me. I've had no problems with it at all and uh, I'll try and turn it around here and show you it from a few different vantage points. This is our motor mounted on blocks to clear it. It's a 12 inch disc so ample sanding um, area. I, the motor, uh, I'll explain where I got that and how I came to Put it all together like this uh, a little bit more complicated it's not it's not from a washing machine but i will explain it the front of it here has uh, a guard and again i'll explain why this is on it it's to help that if you're sanding a small item and there's dust flying around it'll around here and down into this area here at the bottom and this is kind of a chamber that's isolated from the rest, uh, a unit on its own, that you can actually plug um, a hoover or vacuum cleaner hose into the side of it here. Right? And that al allows then to the vacuum cleaner to suck out any dust and that and keep the chamber in here clean and clear. And it's also perspex on the front of it so that you can see what's going on uh, this guard here can be the front of it can be removed uh, I will show you how uh, just undo this screw here And it just simply clips away from it, like so. <laughs> so that if you are sanding something that's fairly long and takes up the width of the disc, you can take the actual guard away from it and work with it that way. And you have full run then of the actual bed here. I suppose the critical thing obviously is that that the disc and this is something you need to really watch out for the disc must be obviously a perfect right angle between here and here the flat bed so that when you put a piece of timber down on it and the disc is running and you're pushing the timber in and sanding it its edge or whatever you want that finish to be absolutely square and only if this and this are at perfect right angle to each other are you going to achieve that. So that's a point you will definitely have to watch for. Another thing is when these are operating 
um, dust is flying all over the place so it would be advisable to wear um, a breathing mask to filter out uh, dust and fine particles and things like that. Uh, the disc itself, the backing part of it I made from a piece of MDF and uh, it works very well. I cut it out with a jigsaw after marking it and then um, put it on the actual motor and had it spinning with a chisel to fine tune it and get the balance of it perfect. So that was easy enough. This guy here, the flat bed, actually tilts up like so. And the reason for that is because the discs I'm using are hook and loop. So you can easily change them out uh, depending on what kind of finish you want to achieve. You might start off with 40 grit and then end up um, toning it down to 80 or 120 grit to get a nice fine finish. So the fact that it's hook and loop it is it a lot easier to um, change out your sandpaper rather than gluing it. Now I've seen a lot of videos where guys um, glue the actual disc to the backing plate but the problem with that then is that if you want to change it you'd either have to have new backing plates with different grades of grit on them uh, sandpaper or and change them out or actually uh, on glued by heating it with a heat gun and getting it peel it off put on a new one but um i like the handiness and the um flexibility of the hook and loop idea now the unfortunate thing is um the the lowest or highest grade grit i can get is 60. Uh, the lower the number the coarser it is as you know so 60 seems to be the lowest I can get in a 300 millimeter or 12 inch disc. So if any of you know out there where I might get a 40 grit, which would be better, um, you know, as a starting grit, it's rougher, it'll take timber down a lot quicker, and then you can finish it off with your um, finer grades. And uh, as I say, because it's hook and loop, it's easy to change them out. So uh, I used a, a piece of a hinge here, an ordinary door hinge. And the reason I use that is because a door hinge is very smooth and it's very tight and rigid in that, you know, there's no flexing with it or anything like that. And it'll hold tight and rigid. And then, as you can see here, I have this little hook um, for catching uh, this little hook here. I don't know if you can see that. Now you can see this little hook here and the idea of that is to lock on to another little hook down here that I will show you that when you close it down the two hook together and it keeps it closed. So this is where all these bits and pieces is where I got the motor from. Now what this is it obviously is all cut up and <laughs> altered in shape but um what it basically is is a, a thing for blowing up bouncy castles it's one of these fans for blowing up bouncy castles and uh actually i found it believe it or not um it was dumped and i picked it up and i thought right i'll this is usable especially the motor part of it so i took it home it was full of water and God knows what else. So I cleaned it all out and I replaced the bearings on the motor uh, after I realized that the motor was okay. And I um, uh, did a lot of surgery then on it. Like the motor was attached here at the side, right? Um, and it was bolted on and this is the impeller. That's the impeller guy that's sitting inside like that and blowing the air out to the actual bouncy castle, right? And this end of it here, 
uh, connects to the castle, right? And um, then there was two, there was two feet attached here to the bottom uh, that you could actually bolt down or you could uh, just leave it standing on the ground flat. So um, I took, cut them off because I needed feet on the back of the motor or on the bottom of the motor. Uh, so I cut them off and I shaped them that the motor would sit um, neatly on top and I glued the two together to get it to work and it's holding extremely well. The You can see here that I cut the top half of this off, the housing, and that's what's actually making the top here on to make the guard. So the other part that I have would have been like so, right, to complete the housing. Um, and it was just a case of me doing a bit of surgery on it to uh, get it to suit my needs and what I wanted it for. Uh, so it just shows, don't throw things away. <laughs> There's always a, a use. Um, what's the old saying? One man's rubbish is another man's treasure. So uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good saying. And these sayings come from years and years of experience. Uh, the only thing I can't get is the 40 grit in the 300 millimeter size. So as I said earlier, if any of you can uh, leave comments in the bottom underneath the video to to um, uh, guide me as to where I might get them. Uh, I can get 60, 80 and 120, but I can't get uh, 40. So that would be valuable. The rest of the frame that the motor is sitting on is uh, just made from 18 mil MDF and it's both glued and screwed together uh, to support the motor. The motor had to be risen up to allow for the 12 inch disc. Now you might want to only use a nine inch or an eight inch or seven inch disc. Again, that would be entirely your own business, but I think the the 12 inch is kind of an all rounder good size. You can go a lot bigger and get big sheets of sandpaper and stick it to it, but um, you want a, a very big, more powerful motor then to do that. Uh, this one motor runs at about, I'd say it's about two and a half, maybe 3000 RPM. I'll rev it up now in a minute when I put the guard back on it. And I'll show you it actually working and sanding as well. We're back on it again and I'll um, switch it on and show you the speed of this and how it works. And there it is at full throttle. So if I get a piece of timber and put it in under it, I just zoom in here and see, can I get a bit tighter? And uh, we'll start standing. Now you can see the dust flying away from it, so what I do is I connect the vacuum cleaner to it. That might help. So we're gonna have a lot of noise here now between the two of them and there we go I get this flash and then I put a curve in it again started out like that there and now we're flat again so I put a curve in it again
And you can see that the dust, there's no great amount of dust flying out because the guard is catching and the hoover is causing a suction and um, it's taking it down underneath and sucking it into the vacuum cleaner. Now because it's only 60 grit that's on it, it will be a, a bit slower. If I have 40 grit on that now, it will be a lot quicker at taking down the timber and then to put a nice finish on it, uh, you would use the likes of 60 or 80, uh, especially going to varnish it and things like that. So there you are, you're back to a curve again. So it does work. Um, I just turn off again to um, cut out on noise. Now, this part here, I've seen variations on this as well. I have this fixed that it's flat. So if you want to sand something at a 45 degree angle, uh, what you would have to do, well, I'm in the process of doing it. I'm going to make up a little jig that will slide along here at 45 degree angles to the disc. And that way then you can put your piece of timber in with that and put it like a T-square and uh, use it to guide the piece of timber that you're sanding and to hold it at a 45 degree angle so that uh, you get a 45 degree um, with respect to the disc. Now what I have seen variations but again this will be entirely up to yourself is people uh, some creators have this on a swivel unit that this can tilt up and down and uh, it can tilt down to a 45 degree angle and that would then when you put your timber in on it this way uh, it's already tilted at a 45 so as i say that's something you would have to uh, decide for yourself this is a fairly straightforward very simple um, idea um, if you as i say you want to use a longer piece of timber than i was using here I mean that's the the kind of finish you will get on a piece of timber and it's it's beautifully smooth that's old pallet timber and very very rough and it's completely sanded down that it looks with a lovely finish on it and you can put all kinds of curves and um shapes and that using the sander so there's no there's no problem with that way with, with using it it's just that if the if it had 40 grit it'd be much quicker to take bigger amounts off at a time and uh, you'd be able to work it um, quicker and then fine tune the finish with a, a finer grit. But that will that will come with time. But as I say, then if that's all right with this gear, that's all right if you're doing a small piece like that. But if you're using a piece that is long, um, let's say I wanted to sand. If I wanted to sand that piece of timber there down I, and run it across, that would sand the face of it because it's, that's again a piece of pallet timber and it's, it's pretty rough. So if I wanted to sand that down, what I would have to do is again, I would unscrew this guy here and take off the cover. Switch on both the hoover, or vacuum cleaner, and the uh, and then you can run it that way. Now again, if that was 40 grit, it would. It is taking it down, but if it was 40 grit, obviously it would do it um, a lot quicker. And uh, this side hasn't been done at all, so I, I just run it on it. Now you can see the dust flying. So that's where you need the old breathing mass. And 
there you go. So, very useful thing to have. I'm going to put a nice finish on a piece of timber. That's lovely and smooth now. Uh, if they ever had the 40, they would take down the rougher side a bit quicker. It will work with it here. It is taking it down. Now we own a 45, I'm thinking of making it something that will travel along and that you can put your timber in and at and follow it and it'll give you the 45 degree angle and then when you sand it down you're following it like that and it will the angle you will get there then will be 45 degrees that's what I'm uh, in the process of doing build up a little thing like a, a 45 degree T square if you like call it that that it, can, it has a piece that will slide along here and it will slide sit in on top of that at 45 degrees so that when you put this in then like that this is the thing sliding along and it's at 45 you put your piece of timber in and away you go right that's what i'm going to do so there's ways around it The beauty of this particular motor was that it has this the switches built in on top which made it an awful lot nicer to use if you use a washing machine motor say one uh, similar to have i got one here i have i mean that would be your typical washing machine motor um, if you use one of the, those, obviously with the wire harness and that, you're going to have to um, rig up some sort of switch somewhere on the unit itself. But in my case, it was handy because the motor had the switch and the capacitor, starting capacitor is inside in this box as well in the housing. And there's a rubber gasket then around here as well. And the switch has a rubber, um, I suppose, splash proof. Uh, thing as well that you get no danger of water or anything like that, that damaging or giving you a shock you can see here the the flat feet now they they were attached to the yellow thing that I, and obviously all this was yellow but i have it sprayed red red and black is my color with things but um this part here you can see the way i shaped it that the motor actually is glued this is glued down onto these two here and these two these came as two halves and then i bolted them together uh, and filed it down to the profile of the motor so that when i sat the motor down and it was really um high quality glue it um stuck to it and it holds it firmly and that way then i was able to use the bolts these bolts to hold the whole thing to the stand now the rest is just basically a box kind of shape and i obviously had to put these um, pieces sections of timber under to prop up the motor to allow for the clearance for the disc on the other side because it's a 12 inch disc it's fairly big but if you were going uh, six inch or eight inch you know again you come out the center of the motor here a six inch disc isn't going to go a whole lot so you would get away with a lot less but in the case of the 12 inch and um, i had to put a lot of blocks of mdf under it to rise it up uh, the base is mdf as well it's all 18 mil mdf and this then is the back the other part of the top of the uh, cowl fan thing that and I, again i've sprayed that black so that's basically the the layout of the whole thing and how it works um useful to have and 
is uh, it's if you're doing a bit of sanding or anything like that, it definitely speeds up the whole process. So there you go. Um, highly recommend that you try and make one. Uh, if you have an old washing machine lying around and the motor is okay in it, by all means, uh, don't throw the motor away. There are several things you can build with washing machine motors. Uh, I'm in the process of, uh, I don't know if it's going to work successfully, but I'm in the process of building a table saw and hopefully the washing machine motor will be strong enough to drive it, but uh, we'll see. That's another project for another day. Um, so that's it folks, uh, I hope you find it useful, it, they're very simple make, uh, as I say there are dozens and dozens of different variations on the same theme, as I say using angle grinders, drills, uh, all different types of washing machine motors, different shapes, uh, you know the, it, there's multiple different ways of doing it so this is just my way and I thought I'd share it with you. So hit the old like and the old subscribe if you can and uh, thanks to those that have and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Take care, bye bye.